It doesn't matter what you do with money, there is risk involved. So every single one of us in this room, if you use money, if you earn money, if you save money, you are subject to some sort of risk. Um, and a huge part of my job as an independent advisor is helping people, number one, to understand risk when it comes to money, number two, to mitigate it where we can, to reduce that risk, and number three, to make sure the risks that my clients are taking are appropriate to their circumstances, to their goals and objectives. So I'm gonna start this off by throwing it back to you guys. What does investment risk mean to you? What do you think of if I talk about risk when it comes, with, when it comes to money? Losing it. Yeah? yeah? How, how risky is this when you're putting money into something? No, I would say it's more the, the, the value of that month to you to spend that money. So is there a value, right, how much of a risk does it mean on a monthly basis to invest in Okay. Insurance and those sort of things. That's how I see that. Yeah. I think you're all right. It really is. If you've, if you've got money and you've worked hard to accumulate it, you don't want to lose it. Equally, you don't want it to devalue over time because the price of has gone up and your money hasn't. And you're absolutely right, Wayne, that, that risk means different things to different people. So to somebody, putting £20 a month into something might be a really big deal. To somebody else, it might be small change. So, so there is no um, uniform approach to this. It is very much an individual thing. Now the main risks that we tend to think of when we're talking about investment, the two big ones, one of them is what we call market risk. So I'm buying something and it might go up in value or it might go down. I'm buying a house but it might be worth less in a year's time than it's worth now. Um, and if you're investing in things like um, shares on the stock market or you're investing in bonds, these things can go up and down really quite rapidly. So we do tend to worry about that. The other one is inflationary risk. Um, and people in my profession have been banging on about this for years and years, and, and over the last 18 months, people finally get it. Stuff goes up, the cost of stuff goes up every year. And if our earnings aren't going up, if our savings aren't going up, we won't be able to buy as much next year as we could this year. And when you amplify that over five years, 10 years, 25 years, it's a huge risk. Um, I love this quote. Does anyone know who this guy is? Warren Buffett. Yeah. <laughs> Well played. Uh, Warren Buffett, does anyone know who Warren Buffett is? That's the more important question. He is one of the wealthiest men in the world. He runs a, a fund called Berkshire Hathaway, and he made his money by investing, primarily in the stock market. Um, but when it comes to making money with money, this guy knows his stuff. And this is a quote, and this quote gets churned out time and time again from him. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Um, and very often I'll speak to, to sort of potential clients, oh, I, I, I'm not an investor, I did something once with the bank and it lost money and I lost loads of money and I've been really put off and, you know, once bitten, twice shy and all of that. What that says to me is they probably invested in something that was not appropriate to their goals. Or even worse, they didn't really have any goals, they just invested into something because someone at the bank kind of talked them into it. So, as an example, I'm going to talk about these things. I'm going to talk about the number six bus that runs past your house and stops at every stop along the way to its journey, to its destination. I'm going to talk about a train, which goes a bit faster, and once you're on it, you can't get off until you get to the next station. And I'm going to talk about this, an aeroplane, which is something that goes up and you can't get off at all until it lands. Now, uh, I am going to pick on someone. Nikki, if you were going from your house to the local town centre, which of those forms of transport would you use? Bus. Yeah? Anyone disagree with that? No? Uh, Amy, if you were going from home to London for the day, which form of transport would you use? Train. Yeah? You wouldn't go on the bus? No, train. Okay. How about if you were going to south of France for your holidays, which one of those would you choose? Plane. Yeah? Anyone not choose a plane? Depends on your goal. <laughs> yeah. I'd probably take the camper van, but it would take the time. All right, let's say we're going to Mallorca instead. Let's say, you know, who wouldn't choose a plane for that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Why wouldn't you use a plane to go into town and do your shopping? Well, you could make it go there. You could try and land it on the high street. But there would be carnage. There would be fatalities. In the same way, why wouldn't you get on the number six bus to try and get into the south of France? Yeah, you just wouldn't go anywhere, would you? Um, and that's exactly the same when we're talking about what you're doing with your money. First of all, you have to have goals. You have to set your destination. 
If you don't know where you're going, then you shouldn't be doing this at all. Now, if your destination is next year's holiday, you need to be putting that money on the bus. If your destination is your retirement in 35 years' time, for goodness sake, don't put your money on the bus. It will go nowhere. So to illustrate that, um, what I've got on this graph, these are three real investment funds that I have recommended to clients in the past and I will continue to recommend them going forward. I haven't told you which ones they are because I don't want anyone uh, mistaking this for financial advice and going and, and acting on it. But these are three very real investment funds. Now this first one down at the bottom there is what's called a deposit fund. So that is invested effectively in a range of bank accounts. It's earning interest uh, through banks and building societies. Over the last 10 years, that has made 5.7%. But there's no volatility in that whatsoever. That has just been a smooth, straight line. The one in the middle is a fairly diversified uh, fund. So it's, some of it's in the stock market, some of it's in property, some of it's in bonds, some of it's in all sorts of things. Over the last 10 years, that has made 54.8%. And the blue line at the top is a purely stock market-based fund. So that is just invested in shares in other companies and it's sharing in their profits. And over 10 years, that one has made 153.1%. And that's by no means the, the top performing fund out there, but I've picked this because this is one that I use regularly. Now, based on that, which fund would you rather have invested your money in 10 years ago? Depends. Yeah? yeah? What does it depend on? Your Absolutely, it does. Yes. What was this little, this little uh, blip? Yeah, it was. Anyone want to guess what that might have been about three or four years ago? No, that was COVID. That was COVID. That, that, see, that, that literally, all funds fell off a cliff over about a two-month period. And by the end of the year, they'd more or less made it back up. And two years later, we were all in profit. If you'd have invested the day before that, with a short-term goal, if you'd have invested some money you needed for six months, that would probably be an equivalent to flying a plane into the town centre. It would have been carnage. You'd have lost probably half of your money. However, if we're talking about your, your long-term goals, if we're talking about saving for your retirement, and you've kept it all in fund C at the bottom there, and you've only made 5% over 10 years, particularly if we overlay that with one other line on there, which is what inflation has done over that period... So this, sorry, I'm still in front of it, aren't I? That's terrible, just realised it. Um, that's how, that, that green line, D, is how much the price of stuff in general in the UK has gone up over that time. If you'd have left all your money on the bus in Fund C for 10 years, you've lost out massively. So, when it comes to investment risk, Warren Buffett is right. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. And when I hear these stories of someone that went into the bank and they put their money in a stocks and shares fund and 18 months later it was down 25% and they took it all out, well, that's because they were bailing off the aeroplane early. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that actually interesting? I thought it might be, but you know, not everyone wants to start talking about investment risk on a Friday morning. Um, any questions? Yeah, go for it. Yes. Is it fair to say though sometimes those type of funds carry higher fees? Not necessarily. Uh, that particular fund will cost you 0.22% per year. So it's not an expensive fund. Um, more so than, uh, sorry Patrick, I'll come to you in a second. Uh, putting money in the bank costs you nothing. But that's because the bank are taking that money and they are lending it out to other people with mortgages and credit cards and, and they're keeping all the profit. Most other funds, you can buy very cheaply uh, and the thing you're investing in doesn't necessarily dictate the, the annual management fee. But it's a good question. Patrick? We're sort of caught. Okay. Yeah. But we've got to pay it back in a lump sum at the end. Okay. So we do need to look fast. And also, the other thing down there doesn't take too high until the end. Yeah. That's just an impression. 
Let's have a chat afterwards. I, I, I would I'd be loath to give any sort of, you know, personal financial advice in this forum. But what, what I would say is do exactly what we've said. Start with a goal in mind. If you know you need this money back in six months, 12 months, 18 months, a bank account or a building society is exactly the right place for it. Um, an ISA is not a product itself. It's just an allowance. So you can put money in an ISA and not have to pay tax on it. But any one of these can be an ISA. Um, if it's money that you don't need for five years, we'll do something different with it. If it's money you don't need for 10 years, we'll do something different with it. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Well, let's have a chat afterwards and, and I can see in the right direction. Wayne? It's, it's a very visual explanation of mm. what you do. Where do you fit into this? Because you mentioned about you go to the bank and mm. you put it into there, but obviously then you are managing it. The bank's going to look after you, the bank's going to make the decisions for you. Where do you come into this? to make sure that that dip, that it, 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 during COVID, you then say to us, why you, you've got to make Is that where you come in? That yeah, your absolutely. Search? And that's a great question, actually. And I probably should have made that point because you know, that's the important bit. What do I actually do? I'll give you an example. I sat down with a, a client yesterday, and this is someone that I used to work with 20 years ago when I was a kitchen designer, and he's retiring next month. And what he's got, he's got various bits of guaranteed pension income, um, but he's going to end up with about £200,000 in cash from money he's saved and money his pensions are going to pay out. Um, and he is one of these people that went into the bank some years ago, into Nationwide, and was sold an ISA, and it went down in value, and he panicked, and he sold it, and he's, I'm not an investor. And so I've been kind of coaching him through this. Um, and so the first question I asked him was, is, is um, let's make it up and say his name's Dave. Dave. Are you going to spend all this money this year? Oh, absolutely not. I couldn't spend 200000 No, no, no. Or are you going to spend it all in the next five years? Well, no, it's got me last me my whole retirement. So is it fair to say some of your money is still going to be around in 15 years, 20 years? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you want to access some of this money in the first year? Well, yeah, I do, actually, because I've got some pension income, but I want to have some holidays, and we really need to replace the car, and we've got some other bits and pieces. So what we need to do is devise a plan. And that plan says, in our minds, we know we're going to spend some of this money in the short term, some of it in the medium term, and some of it we can tuck away longer term. So in very simple terms, what I'm going to do is put some of his money on the bus, some in the, ta in the train, and some on a plane. Now, what that means is, if this year we have another epidemic and another massive drop, he doesn't have to worry about it, because we've got money in the bank that wasn't affected. So I can say to him, Dave, look, all right, this is uncomfortable view, and we're looking at your statement, it's gone down, but don't worry, because we know you're not touching that money for five years, and some of it ten years. What do we need this year? Great, we've already got it over here. And history has told us there has never been a crash where five years later we weren't back in profit if we just rode it. doesn't mean it can't happen, but it hasn't. Now, if the opposite is true, and at the end of the year um, we've seen boom time, and his, his you know, aeroplane fund is way up there, well, we can take some money out of that so that we're not spending all of his cash. So it's mitigating that risk by having a plan. Now, the worst thing I could do is say, like, I understand what you're saying, you've been bitten before, let's not invest any of it, let's keep it all in the bank, because even though interest rates are a bit higher now, it's not going to make enough to match inflation. Or to say, look, let's put all your money in the stock market, because look at all this money we can make. Look, look at Fund A, it's made loads, because then next year, if we have a crash, he's going to be significantly out of pocket. So it's that planning aspect, it's encouraging people to think about what their goals are, uh, we always keep an emergency fund as well, because however well we plan, things can, things can change. So we have an emergency fund, we have our short-term money, and then we stretch it. And then every, every at least once a year, if not twice a year, I'll meet with him, and we'll reshuffle things. We'll move medium money into short-term funds, and long-term into medium, and we'll, you know, we'll de-risk it. And, does that make sense? No, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. That was a great question. Thank you very much. In viewer time, I think we'll have to move on now, but thank you so much for your participation. I hope it was interesting. <laughs> All right.